Laptops for children, right? So in the same budget conversation, it's, this is just a spin-off of what we were just talking about. But yeah. This is a statement. Currently, we are making 2,400 fit-for-purpose laptops available to students and associated staff through the network of 94 secondary schools. This digital ecosystem will offer online platforms and services for teachers and students to respond effectively to the changing needs of an increasingly digital society, particularly for business. Let me tell you a story. So, they have these new laptops that they came in, right? They sent out an email and saying teachers who want to get laptops to do their work or whatnot, they can apply, fill out a form, you know, submit, and you get, you get a laptop to use. So, we got these HP laptops. And the HP laptops, they're basically small, they're very, you know, um, petite, easy to carry around, heavy, and all that stuff. But it's, a, it's like a foldable laptop now. So, the screen could flip around to the other side and it could turn into tablet mode. Yeah, yeah. So, one of the teachers come by me. And they were like, um, Andrew, I want to know how to use this foldable thing because I have a foldable laptop that I use all the time and they, they see me using it all the time to teach and using it as a whiteboard and just connecting it to a projector. Mm. So they wanted to use it too. So I fold the thing backwards. And instinctively, the first thing you would do is you touch the screen, right? Yeah. To, to scroll because it's in tablet mode. You know anything is not a touch screen? <laughs> so they have a fully two-in-one yeah, laptop. So- yeah, so, so fold it and then use the mouse on the other side and how you when, do that. When you, fold, when, you fold, when you fold a laptop, this keyboard and the thing does disable because, of course, your finger's touching it on the back. So there's yeah. no way to scroll when you fold the laptop. And I nearly did. So it's just like, like a, a glorified display, that is it? Yes. And who will sit down and say, yeah, we'll take these? It's just, it baffles me. Worst part is, these things can work 4 gigs of RAM still, boy. Oh, my God. Like, yeah, that, 4 gigs that, that, yeah, that's a deal break, the, 4 the gigs best, of Yeah, 4 gigs of Shivam even mentioned that in the, in the article. Shivam mentioned that. He was like, um, the ministry should um, yeah, yeah, correct but, that. Specifically, government should focus on equipping students with laptops, boosting ample RAM, fast and um, capacious storage, and powerful processors. Because, yeah. I mean... Software. You probably don't need that much of a powerful um, processor if you have an SSD and at least yeah, eight correct. gigs of RAM. Get the people eat core. I mean, well, that's why RAM is well. Yeah. You know, know and RAM is five Chrome tabs. Yeah, and I, I noticed. <laughs> I noticed to say, you know, fit for purpose. What do you mean by fit for purpose? Fit for exactly. purpose. Exactly. Well. When them say minimum. fit for purpose, I like. What you talking about? What purpose these things going to unfill? Yeah. So if I give a child this, all right, cool. They'll be able to use it as a laptop and type up their work and whatnot. But you, you're kind of setting them up when it's a two-in-one and you flip it. And f- first of all, that whole flipping thing, I don't think it's wise to give children a laptop with a hinge that could flip around. Yeah. Because so I'm, I mean, go, well, I know you've been a teacher a few years now. So going back to the last time you are you were teaching last time students were given laptops, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then yeah, they had under under um the UNC, under people yeah, partnership. Yeah. When and each child it, got a laptop. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they, tough. <laughs> these yeah, then they had technicians in the ministry who were supposed to kinda of oversight them. over the laptops and Yep. And then the password, the administrator password leak and then all them children start to um, crack through, um, install things like administrator, yeah. people change operating system. It had a party on a boat ride yeah. where one of the DJs was <laughs> using a ministry laptop. Uh, and I was like, all you, you can't give the children the laptops to carry home. What you want to do is you want to make sure that these, these schools are equipped with the laptops on the premises yeah. And let the children, when they need to use a laptop, if they have to go to the computer lab, if they have to do work, get to use the laptop there because giving children that, that device, first of all, it will get stolen, it will get mashed up, and the technicians wouldn't be able to fix it because children, just normal children on a whole, if you buy a laptop for your child, the average teenager will mash up their laptop in less than three years. Not because of they are bad, bad people, but it will get kicked off the bed, water will fall on it sometimes. Because the law of averages just tell, tells you teenagers are a bit um 
they, 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 they're prone to make mistakes because they are learning. So even some of my good students in school, they will come with a laptop, sir, you can fix this somewhere. I was like, what happened? I was sleeping and I, I, I was on my bed and I kick it off. Or, or sir, I was, I don't know what happened. A bottle of water was just on the table and it get wet and that kind of yeah. thing. It's, it's a recipe for disaster. But 2,400 laptops, 94 but schools. Didn't, um, God. so our friends over at Star, the Star Network or Grip Network, didn't they? Has some type of arrangement with the government a few years ago to, to supply laptops as well. Yes, correct. Yeah, that was in COVID time. Yeah. yeah. And it was called Grapes. Grape, a grape laptop, yeah. One laptop per child for a dollar or some kind of thing like that. But those were generic laptops from Alibaba. And yeah. they, they wasn't going to make it anywhere. So there are two things you got to consider. Here's my, I, I do the maths, right? 2,400 fit for purpose laptops across 94 secondary schools and 25 laptops per school. You know how much children has been in our class? <laughs> like 30, 30 something, 30, no, 30, 30. 36, 36 minimum. Yeah. Like between, I like to say between 30 and 40 students in our class. Wow. Yeah. You give up. Yeah. It didn't well, it used to be so much. Huh? Like in my time, I remember, like it used to be like 30, 32. Yeah, let's just keep going up every time and let's be like, here, take our next one, take our next one. Yeah, we'll send this one. And you're like, what? Or what do really feel it is? There are no furniture for these people. Yeah. Well, now we don't no laptops for these people. Because 25 laptops, you can't teach a class where everybody gets to interact with a laptop one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. If you have a class of 30-something people. <laughs> it was the first thing come to our mind. Like, you imagine you are a student in that class. Right? There are 40 people in that class. Exam time. And you call over to me. And you want Boy, no, and you come, <laughs> you come to the sixteen test. <laughs> when you come to the eighteen test, I be like, no, not me. Really it's it's all like forty, fifty children. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I didn't come last. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That that that. When you come forty eighteen test, <laughs> hey, boy. And from an IT teacher perspective, and talking to other IT teachers, there are some students who are well to do enough that will have their parents give them a laptop and come to school and use it. And yeah. sure, no problem, it will work. And let me say the 25 guest stretch, but apparently, like, from what I've seen, and not, I can't be 100% sure about this, like, teachers also have access to these laptops, unless they have separate ones for the teachers. But the statement does say available to students and associated staff. So the 25 laptops are not just for students, it's for teachers who want to use technology in their teaching, and which, of course, the ministry is encouraging because they want to have, like, um online books and that kind of stuff. Yeah. It it real um it real kinda of disheartening or disheartening to see that well the laptops will be given but there's one thing that still can't get dealt with by school Wi Fi. Hmm. Like you the teacher and you go in our classroom and you tell them, all right everybody, um pull up this this thing or whatnot or whatnot yeah. and they'll be like, Yeah, we do our Wi Fi. Like what are you gonna do? Type of our word document on on device and then tell them you um, put it in our flash drive <laughs> it, i mean technically speaking that is what i had to do my school when i was in school you had no wi-fi in you lucky you lucky you really would have dial up in 2006 yeah, or seven a flash drive was a big thing in 2007 but imagine you put it on a, a, a book list you had to bring a flash drive in the era of cloud storage and things and and students have the ability because covid make plenty of schools go digital and students have email accounts and all that kind of thing like and logins and whatnot come now man but it's a budget presentation so he has to say these things mm -hmm. and when he says these things the teachers now have to listen to these things and know the reality of what's going on on the ground and that and this happening from prestige school to non prestige school. Yeah. Like the the only difference is the prestige school, they probably have parents who are because believe it or not, like don't, don't get twisted as the parents and the support of parents as whole of prestige schools. Huh? Yeah. You don't need like to. if it's yeah, yeah, if you do have parents who who will donate and give their time and all that kind of stuff, yeah. your school could turn from prestige to non prestige really, really fast. Because yeah. it's that and some of them government schools, no no parent good and try and they'll be like the government supposed to pay for that. That's why I paying taxes for thing and all, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah so forgive my rights. Yeah. I go here saying my daughter when you start preschool, right? And 
I didn't get any higher preschool fees, but every other week, you're getting some other fee. It's a, yeah, send, send an envelope for this payment, for that payment, for the. It's like, hey, boy, yeah. is he hidden fees? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was every other week, has some other little fee that you need to pay for. And report I book, because, like, <laughs> report book. My daughter is only three, she's more report book. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, boy. Daddy nature education and uh, it costs it cost, a lot yeah. of money. It costs a lot of money and allocating resources that make you spend more money or make you more frustrated. Uh, I was talking to somebody yesterday and he's like, just don't think I have no teachers because they're frustrating all of them in, out of the job. And I was yeah. like, honestly, yeah. Like, when you frustrate teachers out of the job, you're going to get your do. You, you're going to get very, very untrained teachers in the next few years because all they're doing is coming in because they need to make money and there is no um there's no joy there's no passion in the in the process yeah. of teaching so 25 laptops in a school i will let you know i will make sure i let you know when the laptops reach my school because they ain't reach yet we still on the we still on the yeah, old batch that probably ain't gonna reach anytime soon we're trying to get the old batch to work because the old batch they have they had had hgds inside of them like mechanical hard drives were bought mm-hmm. in 2021 and distributed. So once them laptops take any knock, yeah, and the hard drive yeah, clicking it. one time. And you're like, you could all you could put SSDs, boy? Like for real? Like, but but this yeah. new batch here, based on the HP that I saw, that one have SSD because it's small. Yeah, I mean no for it, they give the give students at least six days around. We can't give the eight, at least give them six. Oh gosh, that real wickedness. That means you go and power four gigs to kind of two gigs to can put two four in now. <laughs> gosh, that's all of it. Something. Like, no. Yeah. So, the the um, good thing is, I guess, they're not sending desktops. Because sending the desktops was even more catastrophic because the maintenance of those desktops was really yeah, bad. I mean, schools do have texts. They go and have a few texts going, going all over the country. Yeah, changing power supplies and all them kind of thing. At least if a laptop has problems, it's under a three year warranty. You you send it back and you get the um the warranty mm-hmm. will be upheld and they fix it. Cause I think that happened with one of the laptops we had once. They had a issue and they did. But the, and these they laptops the and yeah. Sorry. So I know I know that they had other grand for like like a thousand dollars and they had to go through a means test. But these laptops they had a Go through that same thing with his laptops uh, for apparently. I could be well, I know the teachers had to apply for it, at least mm-hmm. in my school, and I confirm I think with another school that teachers did have to put in an application. Um, so the children, I'm guessing that they'll have a means test to but God forbid if they send them children home with them laptops, mm-hmm. right? They're just money down the train. Wasted. Yeah. If it's a once it's a Windows laptop, technically you could get around the admin password. Yeah, like they all had a part BIOS password on that or some kind of thing. Like that. Yeah. But if the BIOS password leak, same thing. Same yeah. thing. Same thing will happen. Man. What are you going to do, boy? That's enough budget talk. Let me talk about, let me talk about something like, that's kind of cool, but scary. <laughs>